Hello everybody, Pastor Kelly's coming at you today with a little sermon slash uh, study I've got going on here about death. You know, it's only been a week since we uh, celebrated Easter, which was celebrating the wonderful resurrection of our Lord Jesus. Death was on our minds and has been on our minds through the whole days of Lent and leading up to and into Resurrection Day. He came, he taught, he preached, he walked among us. God sent his only son to walk among us, to suffer, to be scourged, to pay the ultimate fleshful price of death, to be buried for three days, and to rise again as promised. And as he rose, as he died, and when he rose, he fulfilled all the prophecies, and he fulfilled all of his promises, that if you was to believe in him, and believe that it happened, that you would not have to taste death. All the flesh will taste death, but the spirit will never taste death, because of the ultimate price that Christ paid for you and I. As Paul says, we were bought for a price, and that's the price that we were bought for. It's a very expensive one. This idea that came, that came to me is because a friend of mine, uh, he, he has survived cancer for five years with the help, obviously, of God, God's help, prayer, Cancer-free, and now it's back, and um, this time it's back with a vengeance. And, you know, the, the, he's told he has four to six months to live, if that, and looking at him, I don't know that he has that. But God is the only one that answers that. Yeah. But we all have to die in the flesh, unless, of course, you know, Christ comes back first, and then and then we won't, we won't taste death in the flesh, neither. But as Christians, our spirit, We'll never taste death. Our flesh will, but our spirit won't. Stephen Pearson is a saved Christian, and I don't worry about his his spirit. But for the time I have left on earth, I will miss him in the flesh. But I know I'll see him again in the spirit when we're all gathered together with Christ. Because the absence of the body, absence of the flesh, is to be present with the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Yes, we all have to die in the flesh in order to live and live in the Spirit forever and fulfill, and Christ will fulfill His ultimate promise. God will fulfill the ultimate promise of eternal life. But Jesus tells us not to love the flesh, but to hate it. Sinful nature. John twelve twenty five, Jesus says, He that loveth life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. Praise God. You know, death really is, most people don't even want to talk about it anymore. There is a fellow by the name of John Scott who wrote a book called Cross of Christ. And in that book he says that persons of the Victorian era had a morbid fascination with death but never spoke of sex. Now, all they talk about is sex now. Sex, 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 tweet sex, Facebook sex, YouTube sex, television sex, 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 sex. Oh, well, it's just sex. Oh, it's just the flesh. It's my flesh, your flesh. We do what we want flesh. But they don't talk about death. No. But now, in our generation, is obsessed with sex. But death, oh, has become the unmentionable. Don't talk about dying. No, 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 don't do that. Yet the Bible speaks of death, of the flesh, often. And it's a good thing for the born again, the Christian, that's not worrying about all that fleshful acts but a very bad thing for the unsaved, unrepentant sinner that all they worry about is the flesh. 
In Luke 9, 24, it says, For what is a man's advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself and be cast away into hell? What, 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 what's your advantage for that? For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. Well, you know, we have to die in the flesh to live in the Spirit. And that's something folks do not want to talk about. They don't. The Bible Dictionary defines death. It says, death is the greatest of humankind's enemies. A relentless, grim reaper that shows no respect for the age or wealth. Sometimes it hauls away its victims in masses. And on occasion, it targets the individual. It uses a variety of methods, weapons, but only rarely does it capture the praise without inflicting pain and or terror. Power, beauty, and wealth can usually overcome any obstacle in the flesh. But in death, they meet their match. And John, 1 John 3.14 says, We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. How many unsaved, and quite honestly, be honest with me, Christians, how many Christians love their brethren and mean it? There, uh, it's getting fewer and fewer, but the Bible tells us uh, that our hearts will wax cold, and I see it every day, and I know you do too, praise God, I know you do. Thank you, Jesus, your word is coming true, you're fulfilling your prophecies just as you said you would, you never lie, God does not lie. And that Bible is coming true more and more every day. Is it that most non Christians or many Christians are wanting not to face death. That's why they don't want to talk about it. Do they doubt their faith? Just enough, Christians. Do you doubt your faith just enough that you pray that the rapture comes before you die? Thereby you're you're sidestepping the fleshful demise. You'll never and you wouldn't taste the death. And that we are all destined for. If if Christ doesn't come first, we're all destined for it. Now, you know who you are if you're hearing this, and you may rebuke me, and you may comment about this and what have you, and call me a heretic, but it's facts. Christians, there are many of them out there that, that, that doubt their faith just enough. They'd rather, they want to see Christ come first. Of course, we all would rather see Christ come. Come, Christ Jesus, now, please, Lord. But not to escape what is destined to us. Our destination is eternal life with Christ. Now, if he doesn't come first, we have to die in the flesh in order to gain that eternal life. But as a Christian, we should have been dead in the flesh a long time ago if we were born again Christian. Psalms 90, 10, and, and 12 says, <clears throat> excuse me, the days of your years are three score and ten. And if by reason and strength they are four score, 80 years, yet is the strength and labor and sorrows for it soon cut off and we fly away to the Lord. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Now, that makes a whole lot of sense where all of our days are numbered so maybe we should use them a little more wise by prophesying to, about the Lord, by witnessing to the unsaved, by trying to help as many souls get saved as we can. As a wise old man once told me one time, he said, hmm, 
we were sitting in a doctor's office. I'll never forget. It was right after I had my first heart attacks. That's plural too, <laughs> tax. <laughs> and they done told me I was gonna die. But anyhow, we were sitting in there, and he said, "No one is getting out of this one alive. No one, not unless Christ comes first. And that scares ninety-nine percent of the people, including most Christians. Yet we all, at least we should, know." know that we shouldn't fear it. We should welcome it. We should know that, you know, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through the Lord Jesus. That's Romans 6.23. We know this. We're Christians. But yet, we fear that fleshful demise. We shouldn't. We should not. Do I want to leave my loved ones behind in the flesh for those short few years, which in eternity is nothing but, as the Lord says, a blink of the eye? No, I don't. I don't want them hurting. I don't want to lose them. I don't want to be here hurting. But I have the joy in my heart that knows that my loved ones, well, at least most of them, are saved Christians, and that I'll see them again. And and you blink your eyes and it's over and it's done. You're there. You're back with them for eternity in heaven, worshiping the Lord, serving for Him in His in His in His heavenly kingdom in that beautiful city, where He has many rooms. His mansions have many rooms. There's enough room for all. The Lord said He wouldn't even tell you that if He didn't know it, if He didn't mean it. Yes, He did. So. Do I fear death in the flesh? Yeah. And no. Yes, for any fear of something that I've never experienced, that's normal. Anybody's going to have that. And no, my faith, it comforts me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Now, a lot of people misread that. That's not my rod and staff. That's the Lord's rod and staff that comforts me. To the point that I welcome death to be with our beloved Savior. Amen. Give the Lord an amen, please. I welcome it the day it comes so I know I will be with our precious Lord Jesus. Please give the Lord some praise. With this in mind, I look at a scripture to lead me through my lifespan. To help me, any, any, any who have an ear to listen my sermons with with a prayerful mind. And thank you, Jesus, for any that do. Anyone I may have helped with any of these words I speak. And you know, it it, it always leads me back to the, the wonderful Psalm twenty three four. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of the death. I will fear no evil, praise God, for thou art with me, thank you, Jesus, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me, Lord. I know you're there. I know you will conquer any evil that will ever harm, befall me or my loved ones. Revelation 21, 4 says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. To start, we know as Christians, we Christ defeated death, sin. He defeated it at the cross. So what, what did Paul mean when he said the last enemy? shall be destroyed is dead. Huh. One of them things that makes you scratch your head as a Christian going, what? Well, now Jesus defeated that at the cross. I remember reading that. Yeah, I was in the Bible. <laughs> well, he did. But he was speaking of how we must all die in the flesh. But we must, in the flesh, 
but not in the spirit. Our faith in Jesus saves us from the spiritual death, thereby giving us everlasting life. John 3.16, amen. We all know and love that verse, don't we? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Praise Jesus. Thank you, God. Yeah, we all know that one and love that one. We sure do. I do. That was the first verse I ever memorized back when I was about nine or ten years old. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Lord, for putting that on me. The enemy death is is in itself, and by Jesus defeating them both at the cross with the precious blood, and, and when we die in the flesh, we... We spiritually go to heaven to be with Jesus, yeah, absent from the body. Second Corinthians five eight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body, and to be present with the Lord. Yeah. Safe people shouldn't fear death. We should hate. We shouldn't hasten it either. I mean, you know, we shouldn't, shouldn't sit there praying to die. You know, well, we should pray for the Lord to come, and then we don't we don't die, but not because we're feared of what what's coming. We should live our lives as full as possible as a tribute to God for His gift to us. Life, Genesis one twenty seven. So God created man in His image, and in the image of God created He Him. Male and female created he them. Now keep in mind that when that time does come, and it will for all unless Christ comes back first, we will be in his presence. Either way. Where we will love, serve, and worship our precious Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise Jesus. Get the Lord another amen, please, I beg you. Thank you, Lord. Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection was for us to show us many things. It was to save us so that we shall rise someday and we shall live eternal and we shall be sinless. We too shall be perfect. We too shall ascend into heaven. Or excuse me, Luke twenty thirty six and thirty eight. Neither can they die any more, for they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God, being the children of the resurrection. For he is not a God of the dead. Let me read that again for you. For he is not a God of the dead, but of the living. For all live unto him. I love that verse. I really do. God promised us eternal life, and our God does not lie. He does not lie. He is, he is always was, he always is, he always will be, and he will never lie to you. And he promised us eternal life. And by being so, he breathed life into you. He started life. He started every life you see, down to the amoeba, up to the tree, up to every person, man, woman, child, bug, anything crawling. God started it, got it going, created life, because he is not a God of the dead. He is a God of life. We have to remember, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after that, this, the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many and unto them that look for him shall he appear 
the second time without sin unto salvation. So we're, we're going to die in the flesh one way or another. Again, unless Christ comes back first and come Lord Jesus, please. If it's your will, it's your time, please, God, come now. But if you don't, and the flesh passes on, and the Spirit comes to be with you, it just means we got there a little quicker than the rest. And that's not a bad thing. That's a wonderful thing. That is a wonderful thing. As Christians, we need to start talking about this more often. We need to discuss with people, especially when we're soul winning or witnessing, look, folks, you're going to die. I don't care how hard you're living in the flesh right now, unless the Lord comes back first. And if he does and you're an unsaved sinner, you're going to die in the flesh anyway. But we're all going to die. tells us that and as it is appointed unto men once to die but after this the judgment so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many and unto them that look for him shall appear the second time without sin unto salvation folks and as it is appointed unto men once to die. But after this, the judgment. This is what we all need to remember. We're going to die. It's appointed for us to die in the flesh. Once. After this, the judgment. We need to witness this to the unsaved. We need to witness this to the stillborn. And if you don't know what that is, look it up. That is these folks that uh, follow the easy believisms and really weren't saved to begin with because they didn't believe. They didn't meet the prerequisite of 100% faith. I'm not the one judging. The Bible is. God is. Look it up. But we need to keep witnessing this. You're going to die and then judgment. And, and, and after that judgment, where do you want to be? Even if you are a saved Christian, you will be judged. We all will be judged of our works. Yes, we are saved by grace through faith. But look up in the Bible how many times Lord Jesus and Paul and Peter and all of them tell us, James, that we will be judged by our works. Doesn't mean we're not getting saved or not going to heaven, but we will be judged by our works on earth and in heaven. And woe, woe, woe be the unsaved sinner. And that's what we need to preach. People think they're going to live forever. I mean, as a kid, we all did. But we're not. You know, at one time, you know, people lived eight, nine hundred years. And God backed it on down to 120 for sin. You know, and then, uh, as I read earlier, you know, 70 or 80 years, and you're lucky. If you get that long. I mean, my buddy I was telling you about earlier, he's 59 years old. I doubt he'll make 60 in July. You know, it's going to happen. question is, is where you're going to spend eternity. Are you going to spend eternity with our Lord Jesus in heaven? Worshiping God forever? Or are you going to spend eternity groveling and burning and lashing in the teeth in hell, fire and brim and stone? Is it, you know it's up to you. The choice is yours. I can't make that choice for you. Your wife can't make that choice for you. Your husband can't make that choice for you. Your mom and daddy can't make that choice for you. No one but you. I can't preach you into heaven. I can't preach you into hell. 
but I can preach you the truth to know that if you don't believe in the words that I'm saying and you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection, and his, then he will save you by the grace of by through your faith, if you don't believe that, then I can tell you right now, you will be burning in hell. Oh, Pastor Kelly, you can't say that. I just did. I just did. But to love your brethren, and that includes your sister and two, this is old English, is to let them know what they're up, to, up for. Let them know what they're in for. Let them know that they're not immortal. They can be immortal, immortal, by believing in God. They can live forever by having 100% saving, salvific faith. You will receive 100% salvific grace. But that's the only way. So. What I'm saying is, folks, if you're a saved Christian, don't be afraid to talk about death. Don't be afraid of death. Be afraid of the unknown experience, but don't be afraid of death itself. Love your brothers and sisters. Be there for them. Praise God every chance you get. Witness Jesus every chance you get. And just maybe, I pray, we can save a few more, help, help save a few more souls. We don't save the souls. Christ saves the souls. We can help save a few more souls. And have a few more friends running around with us up there in heaven. Don't fear it, folks. Welcome it. Embrace it. Hate your life in the flesh. Love your eternal life. Well, I hope I didn't get you too down in spirit. I hope I brought you up in spirit. I hope I've kindled a fire in your in your soul and in your mind that you go out and witness to a little of this. Study a little of this. I'm going to leave you with what I always leave you with. I'll be praying for you. Y'all pray for me and my family. We all need it. Pray for my friend Steve. He needs it very badly. We love you. Jesus loved you more. He died for you. Amen. Pastor Kelly's out of here. <laughs>